morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Lieutenant General Scott A. Spellman, 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, welcome to the Pacific Ocean Division Change of Command Ceremony. Joining him today is Command Sergeant Major Douglas Gaelic, the 15th Command Sergeant Major, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Today's ceremony marks the passing of the colors, the symbol of command, Mark E. Gibbs to Brigadier General Joseph C. Getz II. At this time, we would like to recognize some of our distinguished guests who have joined us today. Please hold your applause until all the introductions have been completed. Mayor Rick Blanchardi, Mayor of the City and County of Honolulu. General Charles Flynn, Commanding General, U.S. Army Pacific Command, and his wife, Mrs. Kathleen Flynn. Sergeant Major Jason Schmidt, Command Sergeant Major, U.S. Army Pacific Command. We also would like to recognize all other commanders, command sergeants majors, family and friends attending today's special event. Please join me in a round of applause in honor of our distinguished guest. At this time, lay are presented to Mrs. Gibbs and their son, Ryan. The lei represents aloha and mahalo for being part of the Pacific Ocean Division Ohana. Lay are presented to Mrs. Getz, their children Ben, Charlie, and Addie. The Lay represent Aloha and welcome to the Pacific Ocean Division Ohana. Today's ceremony is derived from our Army's first manual of ceremonies, the Blue Book, written in 1779 by General Baron von Steuben. The ceremony that you're about to witness includes arrival of the official party, honors, honors to the nation, change of command, remarks, and conclusion. The 25th Infantry Division Band will also participate in today's ceremony. We hope you enjoy this historic event. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Scott A. Spellman, 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, who will preside over the ceremony. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors, the playing of the national anthem, and the invocation given by Mr. Joshua Biggers, Senior Program Manager, Pacific Ocean Division, Lieutenant General Spellman has deferred honors to Brigadier General Gibbs and his family.
Aloha. Would you all bow with me for a word of prayer for a moment? Dear God, thank you for this glorious day as we gather and recognize a leadership change for the Pacific Ocean Division. We humbly thank you for giving us four outstanding years with Brigadier General Gibbs and his family, who together took on a position of great responsibility with sacrifice, faithfulness, and caring leadership as our alaka'i, or leader. Together, the Gibbs family led us through sunny, rainy, windy, windy snowy, and fiery days. It is amazing to think back at the volume of change, devastation, growth, and challenge that occurred during your tenure. Through it all, you yourself to us with steadfast devotion and mindfulness, where our success was your main focus, not your own. You put us before yourselves most of the time and set an example. This will never be forgotten. Today, we bless the Gibbs family as they now transition to California. I, I mean, Oregon. I mean, Washington, D.C. That's the last place this week we heard you're moving to. Wherever the army takes you, we are thankful that the Gibbs family will, as always, show our fellow military leaders and international partners what selfless American leadership looks like. Lord, we also humbly thank you for bringing us Brigadier General Getz, our new Alaka'i. While you are new to our Pacific Ohana, many people from your past command roles have shared about your caring, sincere, mindful, strategic, and understanding leadership style. Those kinds of words bring hope, and we hope we don't let you down. We are grateful to see your family here, Beth, Charlie, Ben, and Addie. We all understand the unique sacrifice at home as you're about to spend most of your waking hours leading us, the missed family events, the struggle of balance. This is not lost on your new work, Ohana. For the next few years, as that good and bad weather comes for us in emergencies, in military programs, in civil works, in international engagements and partnerships, we pray to be fully present and efficiently engaged to help ease the burden, give you our best action and counsel, and trust in your leadership. During those times of change, you can lead with a steady hand so we do not stumble. Thank you for the service you and your family are about to undertake as we work to build and protect our nation's most complex region, the Army Corps of Engineers, and our military. Lord, please bless this change. Amen. Thank you, Joshua, for your beautiful words. Please be seated. For the last 63 years, the Pacific Ocean Division has proudly fulfilled its commitment to delivering vital public and military engineering services with Indo-Asia Pacific partners, integrating capabilities to engineering solutions that enable access, posture and protection, providing water resource management and environmental stewardship, and disaster preparedness and response, all in order to promote security, deter aggression, and to develop and protect our nation's security. Today, we reaffirm that commitment with the time-honored tradition of Army Change of Command ceremonies. The Change of Command are simple, traditional events that are rich with symbolism and heritage. Key to the ceremony is the passing of the organizational colors. These colors represent not the lineage of the, of the command, but also the commander's symbol of authority and responsibility to the as well as the loyalty and unity of the soldiers and civilians. Wherever the commander is, there too are the colors. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major who is a senior enlisted soldier in the unit and principal advisor to the commander. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of authority from the outgoing commander to the commander. It also demonstrates to the soldiers and civilians of the organization that the mantle of leadership now passes to the new commander and with it the loyalty of the workforce. Command Sergeant Major Lopez will now pass the colors to Brigadier General Gibbs in his final duty as a commander. Brigadier General Gibbs, who was entrusted with the command of the Pacific Ocean Division, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, on 8 July 2020, passes the colors to Lieutenant General Spellman, symbolically relinquishing command. Lieutenant General Spellman will now pass the colors to Brigadier General Getz, thereby entrusting Brigadier General Getz with the command and well-being of the workforce. 
by authority of the Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5A, the undersigned assumes command of the Pacific Ocean Division, United States Army Corps of Engineers, effective 13 June 2024, signed Joseph C. Getz II, Brigadier General, U.S. Army Commanding. Brigadier General Getz will now pass the colors to Command Sergeant Major Lopez, his senior enlisted advisor and the keeper of his colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the 55th Chief of Engineers and Commander of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Lieutenant General Scott A. Spellman. General Flynn, Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us today to recognize two amazing leaders, Brigadier General Kirk Gibbs and Brigadier General Cleet Getz. I want to start by just taking a moment to thank everyone who helped put today's change of command ceremony together. These ceremonies just don't happen by accident. Anyone who played a part, large or small, in organizing today's event. You know, we always say that no one accomplishes anything in this army by themselves, and that's so true. So I want to make sure we took time to thank the team of professionals who have supported both Kirk and Cleet on their respective leadership journeys. And of course, that includes the entire team of professionals here in the Pacific Ocean Division, their stakeholders, their partners, certainly their very talented industry contractors. And I also want to highlight the folks from the U.S. Army Engineer School back at the Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, who may be dialing in this morning, who have supported Cleet during his recent time. But I especially want to take just a few moments and recognize their fa families. And I want to start with Kirk. For those of you who missed the, uh, the, the award ceremony earlier, Kirk met his wife, Kim, when they were in the second grade. That means they have known each other for the past 46 years. How often does this happen? They married in 1994, so this July 9th will mark their 30th wedding anniversary, and I think that's the definition of a lifetime together. And Kirk tells everyone he could not have taken this journey without his best friend, and we all know that's true. So we wanted to especially thank you, Miss Kim, for your service and sacrifice along this incredible journey that you and your family have been on. Uh, the Gibbs family has a total of 14 times. This next one to DC, finally, DC Kirk, uh, will be their 15th move. And they have, uh, his, Kirk's family has served in their own ways during Kirk's five deployment. One to Bosnia, twice to Kuwait, and two to uh, Afghanistan. And as we all know, this was time, valuable time that he spent away from his children. Their two oldest, Kelsey and Tyler, are back in Missouri, and unfortunately they cannot be here with us today. Their youngest son, Ryan, 19, who is here with his special guest, Miss Sierra. Ryan, great to see you. Ryan just finished his fresh at James Madison University, go Bulldogs, Ryan, where he is also in the Army ROTC program. So to the Gibbs family, thank you for all you have done and all you continue to do for our Army. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me talk a little bit about Cleet and Beth and talk about a few things that are not in his biography. Cleet met his wife, Beth. They have been married for 25 years and have completed 14 moves together, 14 PCS. Okay, they met at a wedding the week after Cleet graduated from West Point. Cleet told me he realized he had seriously outdone himself, so he asked Beth to marry him just a short, few short weeks later before she figured out that she was marrying down. <laughs> That's a true story. Beth is an accountant by training but works for a software company in human resources, Cleet and Beth. Uh, Beth is tremendously supportive of the Army being the other person in their, uh, in their lives. Cleet and Beth have three children, all here today. Ben, 21, who is a senior at James Madison University, go Bulldogs again, where he is studying to be a high school history teacher and a wrestling coach. Their son, Charlie, 
18, just graduated from Waynesville High School and recently made the decision to attend the United States Military Academy at West Point, where he will report on the uh, 1st of July. Congratulations, Charlie, you're gonna be great. And her daughter, daughter Addie is 14 and is a rising star in the 10th grade. She is trying her at a bunch of activities, golf being the latest. Uh, Addie, I am told that you love Taylor Swift, but you hate it when your dad tries to sing like Taylor Swift. Cleet said, if you want to confuse his nomadic kids, just ask them where they're from. And believe me, uh, Ben, Charlie, Addie, everyone here gets that. Cleet's hometown is also home to a branch of the Defense Finance and Accounting Service, or DFAS. So Cleet jokes that Rome is where your travel vouchers go to die. Rome is about an hour east, I believe, of Syracuse, New York, and was also home to Griffiths Air Force Base. So Cleet grew up with jets flying overhead, and at the age of five he and his best friend found a book in the library on the united states air force academy and they both decided again at the age of five on the spot that they were going to become fighter pilots cleet applied and uh got into the air force academy but his eyesight kept him out of the pilot training program so instead cleet set his sights no pun intended on west point where he earned his degree in civil engineering and we've been blessed as an engineering regiment ever since. Just as an aside, Cleet's friend did end up going to the Air Force Academy, ended up flying for 20 years as an F-16 pilot and they remain, remain close friends even uh, today. So that's the thing about uh, this military life. People come and go, but those friendships certainly endure. So before we say farewell to both Kirk and his family, let's talk a little about all that they've accomplished while working and making new friends here at Pacific Ocean Division. Kirk was our third commander and division engineer of the Pacific Ocean Division, assuming that duty on 8 July 20. And for our guests here, the division engineers and the Army Corps of Engineers, they really are, they're like CEOs of Fortune 500 companies because the construction programs that they lead are really just that large. Uh, adding to this, our Pacific Ocean Division has the largest geographic area of responsibility in the Army Corps of Engineers uh, today. It consists of four districts and a highly diversified workforce of over 1,600 military, civilian, and local national team members across the region. And this team manages over an $11 billion construction program across the entire Pacific with districts in Alaska, Honolulu, Japan, and Korea. Kirk led the Pacific Ocean Division disaster response operations on numerous occasions during his tenure as our commander. In 2023, when the Pacific Ocean Division was hit with two back-to-back -back disasters. So in May 2023, a Category 4 typhoon named Mawar made landfall on the island of Guam. And the Pacific Ocean Division was ready to support because Kirk leaned ahead and pre-positioned all the necessary emergency support assets so that our teams would be able to provide immediate relief after that typhoon had passed. And this pre-planning allowed the Honolulu District and our 249th Prime Power Engineer Battalion to immediately provide generators to critical facilities, such as hospitals and shelters. The teams were also more readily able to install temporary roofs to homes that were damaged by the terrible winds and quickly remove debris that schools and businesses could soon reopen. Ultimately, just a few numbers, USACE removed approximately 280,000 cubic yards of debris. Ladies and gentlemen, that's about 14,000 dump trucks of material and they installed or supported the installation of about 450 metal roofs on homes that had been damaged. And then we all know the POD team was again called to action two short months later when wildfires swept across the island of Maui on 8 August of last year. And among the buildings destroyed in those fires was the King Kamehameha III Elementary School which had served the Lahaina community since 1913. The state of Hawaii requested assistance to build a temporary school for those children and a Honolulu district step, stepped up to assist. They started that project on November 20th of 2023 and in just over three months, 95 days, they turned over that campus to the Hawaii Department of Education. And when you stop and think about that for just a moment, it is a very significant accomplishment. More than 600 local children were able to continue their education and more importantly, receive some sense of normalcy a mere three months following the destruction of their entire community. Kirk, your team's focus on families didn't stop with disaster response mission. POD's Army Quality of Life projects have also been equally outstanding. The Far East District's completion of the final housing tower at Camp Walker in Korea is an enabling an additional 
360 Army families to enjoy a state-of-the-art complex, including facilities and amenities for children. And military families in Japan now send their children to six new cutting-edge DOD education facilities because of the work your team has accomplished. You also continue to achieve success through the military construction program, the Alaska District's completion of the F-35A Lightning II bed down at Eilson Air Force Base was strategically significant for our nation. And also of note was Alaska's district completion of the Missile Defense Agency's Long Range discrimina Discrimination Radar Complex at Clear Air Station in Alaska. And completing phase two was a critically important component of our ballistic missile defense system. So finally, Kirk's direct leadership resulted in POD providing exceptional support to U.S. forces in Korea for several joint multinational training events in the Korea theater of operations. So Kirk, it goes without saying that you have clearly done an outstanding job here in Pacific Ocean Division. You have demonstrated your leadership, driven this division to overcome all challenges put before you, and most importantly, you have taken care of your people all along the way. I have no doubt you will continue to shine as our Deputy Commanding General for Military and International Operations. It is the perfect fit for your overseas experience and your military construction expertise. So thank you, Kirk. So while Kirk left a significant imprint on POD, I know our incoming commander is equally up to the challenges that lie ahead. Cleet spent the past two years serving as our Century Commandant, the 100th Commandant of the U.S. Army Engineer School at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, where he has been doing a phenomenal job shaping the future of our Army Engineer Regiment. He was responsible for the training and development of more than 88,000 engineer soldiers. He was also charged with our material portfolio modernization. And because of his work at the schoolhouse, Cleet's fingerprints are all over the equipment and the standards our regiment will use in the future, particularly in our abilities to breach obstacles, shape terrain, and advance human machine integration. He also led the engineer regiment's efforts to manage our talent in the wake of the largest reorganization of engineer force structure since 2014. Cleet created new key and developmental opportunities to ensure that we are ready for the talent demands of the Army of 2030 and beyond. And when not working, Cleet's favorite things to do are travel, exercise, read, and spend time with his family. He has been to about 25 countries, and I know he will be significantly adding to that list during his time in POD. Cleet, I have no doubt that you have all the experience and vision to continue propelling this high-performing team into the future and allowing to, to even more flourish in its mission. You are exactly the right person at the right time to lead Pacific Ocean Division team to even greater successes in the years to come. So, ladies and gentlemen, serving as a commander anywhere in the Army is a tough but important job. And being selected to command at the general officer level doesn't happen by accident. Kirk Cleet, you have proven time and time again that you know how to handle the toughest positions. I'm excited to see what you will accomplish in the service to others in your new assignments. And to members of the POD team here with us this morning, thank you for everything that you do each and every day for engineering solutions for this region's toughest challenges. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, once again for your support and attendance this morning. It's an honor to be here with you. SAONs, Army Strong, be all you can be. Thank you, General Spellman. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Commanding General, Brigadier General Kirk E. Gibbs. Aloha. All right, that's pretty good. E como mai. Thank you all so much for being here today. It means a great deal. General Flynn, thanks for being here, sir. General Spellman, thanks so much for hosting this event. And um, you've done a few turn and burns to support some things out here and it's not an easy trip appreciate that mayor blangiardi thanks so much for being here sir let's say a few more things in a little bit uh, about our relationship uh fleet master chief isom command sergeant major schmidt command sergeant major gaelic um some of the senior nc or senior ncos non-commissioned officers senior enlisted advisors across our military and it's such an honor to have them and all of the other distinguished guests, employees, friends, and family of the Pacific Ocean Division. This is truly a great day for this division. 
for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and our theater army. In such a beautiful setting, there are none better. Uh, I've pinched myself every day for four years living here. I'm so fortunate to have commanded this great organization. Who get, I mean, who gets to live on Palm Circle for four years? Oh, J. Bartholomew's gets five. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a few other four-year uh, moving up. That's, that's the power of continuity, sir. Kim and I are thrilled to pass the reins to Cleet and Beth Getz. The best part of this transition has been getting to know them and to be able to call them friends now. But before I begin, I, I also want to recognize the very hard work of the many who planned and executed this event. First of all, 25th Infantry Division Band, thank you. Always sounds so professional. Our rehearsal, when we're pushing the phone music, we always mess it up, but you all never do. Our, my staff uh, who planned this, uh, there's been, I, I've been working late to close things out, but every single one of them working late, working so hard. And uh, it's such a professional event, and I appreciate that. And then Josh, just beautiful, beautiful prayer. I wouldn't have wanted anyone else to do that but you. So first and foremost, I want to thank God for his blessings on me, my family, and the Pacific Ocean Division. No, how, no matter how undeserving I am, he always delivers. So first, I want to reflect on my journey just a little bit. As I've reflected on the past four years, for much of the last month, I've struggled with this speech more than any other one that I've been given, that I've given. Today, and this sounds like I'm introducing a briefing, but my purpose is to say thank you and leave this audience and the virtual audience with an understanding of how special the people of POD are, how hard they work in the Arctic and across the Pacific and deliver for our nation and other nations. Doing that briefly has proven to be a challenge. A lot has happened in four years. But I do want to begin by highlighting a turning point for me. About 17 months into command. Uh, those of you who have been here a while, this date may mean something. December 2nd, 2021. That's the day the Army sprang into action on the Red Hill water contamination. I woke up that morning. I'm a person of routine. The first thing I do, make coffee. I check email before I go out for a run. And I opened my email. And uh, anytime you open your email in the morning and General Flynn has sent something in the middle of the night, you know he's either traveling, and I knew he wasn't traveling, or you're about to read something that's that, uh, going to put you to work. So the first line said, if you're on the two line of this email, whatever you thought you were doing today, you're not doing that. <laughs> I'm telling you to do. I got a meeting at 9 in my office. I didn't run that morning, sir. I didn't get my PT. Uh, I was, uh, and, and um, you know, what transpired in the next two months uh, and beyond was work around the clock by so many across USERPAC, within USERPAC, USERHA, POD, a every uh, single Army unit. The Navy was dealing with it. And the ultimate goal was taking care of our soldiers and their families. As many of you know, our Honolulu district and then our entire enterprise as a whole came together and constructed the granular activated carbon filter systems, or simply GACs, which is fun to say, that remain on AMR and Red Hill to this day, the last measure to ensure clean water flows into those homes. And it's been out there for over two years. And I'm so proud of that accomplishment, but so proud that the focus was on our families and people. Extremely impressed and proud of our work, but this is what I want to highlight from that event. I changed that day. My understanding of the Hawaiian culture, the love of the land, the importance of the water, how passionate, how special the people are. People in the EOD and across these islands. Our mission here is important, but leaders must lead with an understanding of the culture and the people, as well as the impacts of our operations and our actions on a daily basis. I began to understand how truly, truly special this assignment was, and this command was at that time. But I also recognized the Corps had tremendous abilities here and across the entire Pacific. And, and I felt the weight of that every day since then. But I've been honored to serve. 
General Flynn, I want to thank you for your leadership you've provided over the past three years, and specifically during that crisis, it set the tone um, for my command and many commands. You can continue to absolutely be the right leader at the right time, at the most consequential time in the consequential theater. I thank you for your support, D and you, and trusting us to be out here. Thank you for making us part of your theater army. And if Kathleen was here, I was going to thank you for making me, Kim, and Ryan family. She really has. Now, that's an event out of many years since I've been here, from power issues and water main breaks at Army installations that required us to bring assets in from across the Corps, 249th Prime Power and others, all, the Typhoon in Guam, and of course the horrible fires in Maui. Pacific Ocean Division has responded every single time with a focus on helping people. And Spellman, I want to thank your leadership. It's been amazing. You have always been our strongest supporter out here. If we needed resources, you sent them. If we required expertise, you found it and you sent it. If I simply needed advice on how to work an issue, you provided it in what seemed like minutes, and it often was minutes. You always picked up the phone, you always answered your email when I had questions, about EISs. Okay, if you know about EISs, you can giggle on that one. That's a, that's a tough, tough mission. I'm absolutely honored that you selected me to come up to headquarters to be a DCG, and I want you to know that this entire division, POD, appreciates you. Thank you. I'd like to give General Flynn and Lieutenant General Spalman both a hand. Okay, so to my PAOs watching me and monitoring, and you're not doing an AAR with me after this one, okay? It's not ha happening, Anna. I saw you walk in. Before I thank a few others, I want to acknowledge our four districts. They don't get enough credit, and many of you here aren't, aren't familiar with what they've done. And, and this is just a slice. But our Alaska district's executing a one-plus billion dollar civil works program, hundreds of millions of quality of life projects up in Alaska, they're strategic. They've the MDO pre program, MDA program, Missile Defense Agency program in Alaska. Uh, they've knocked that out of the park. And they maintain critical relationships with 229 federally recognized tribes and so many stakeholders. Uh, Alaska District, those listening, you are making our nation stronger every day. And, and you are critical in the Arctic. Honolulu District or familiar with all the things they do here. But I do want to highlight that we completed the user PAC headquarters. I'm very happy about that. Critical projects on Army installations, no further action letters on 11,300 acres of Department of Hawaiian Homelands lands out in Waikoloa. That's a developable. And of course, the work on Maui and Guam. Far East District, you've closed out construction related to the Yongsan relocation program. It's been a decade or more in the making and work. You're preparing for a $1.2 billion Korea Air and Space Operations Center at Osan that will be constructed, will begin under General Getz's watch. And uh, your replacement of the Kunsan Air Base runway was in 90 days. It was one of the most disciplined and well-executed projects I have ever witnessed. In our Japan district, delivering everything for DLA, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, Dodea, and many, many others, Japan's mainland, and Okinawa. It goes on and on. If any of you have never been to Camp Schwab on Okinawa, I encourage you to get to Okinawa, go see it. The district is the construction of a runway that is a land reclamation project, filling the ocean, and bringing that runway to the sea. Believable engineering. And I stood on it last month. Um, 50 things right. I thank our commanders and their senior civilians since I have been here. Names real quick. 
because it's, you're going to get a taste of how long I've actually been here. This is how many commanders I've had. Commanders, Eric Marshall, Ryan Peavy, Thomas Farrell, Gary Bonham, Dave Hibner for a few months, now in SES, Damon De La Rosa, Jeff Palazzini, Chris Crary, Heather Levy, Jess Curry, and Eric Swenson. Great commanders. Let's stand. And then I'm always going to, I know this is going a little long. I, I, I'll get done here in a minute. My senior civilians are so important. Brad Scully, Jennifer Moore, John Pikert, Regina Vetter, Gary Kitkowski, Randy Bowker, Valerie Palmer, uh, Rich Bird, Chad McLeod, and Dave Che. Let's give them a hand, please. So those districts, they're superb leaders with even better people in their districts executing and building stuff every day. Okay, I want to highlight the team efforts briefly and then I'll wrap it up. If I have focused on anything as I have commanded in, this, in the Corps for the seven of the past nine years, it's been the importance and the power of strong partnerships and relationships built on trust. And there are so many of those that drive what we do. You can't solve tough problems without partners who will stand with you when the work gets hard. And that brings me to the relationship that I and the district and the region and the Corps has with Mayor Blanchardi. Sir, the Alawai watershed is one of those tough problems that can only be solved through partnership. We will solve it because you are leading and you are supportive. You're open. Um, things and it's me, you answer it. I that the mayor attended 13 public meetings over the last two years with our team as we discussed this project with the public. Amazing, amazing support. I rarely see that kind of support. I want to thank you, sir. I appreciate your part. <laughs> and I've got to thank Mike Formby as well. Close, become a close friend. I appreciate your leadership, Mike. Um, I want to shift to the Sister Rivers Partnership. Uh, they're not here, but I think Dr. Analak Kitakun, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, the Mekong River Commission, might be listening. He emailed me last night. Um, that partnership between the Mekong River Commission and the Mississippi River Commission and the, the Corps of Engineers at large is a special one. In the words that he told me once, he goes, we have business partners, but the United States is our friend and friends can change the world okay business partners are looking to make money and accomplish other things friends change the world thank you Analak. i appreciate your friendship and finally i see her in my direct eye said i've got to mention jennifer sabas she asked me uh, but she's taught me a lot and when she pushes me that's because she cares about these islands and its people and uh, i'm looking forward to Let's get to, get to know you, Jennifer. Thanks so much for your friendship. I appreciate that. Okay, our POD staff, I haven't mentioned them, but just super leaders. Uh, my SES is Damon Lilly, Brian Camisado, Jose Sanchez, and acting Randy Bowker. Deputy Commanders Jason Williams and Chris Crary. My Chief of Staff, Regina Vetter, and for a short time, Sherry Moore. Command Sergeants Major, Doug Gaelic, and you see where he's sitting today. That's how good he was out here. And Jaime Lopez, the current SAR major. Our superb front office staff. I have to mention Stacy and Kevin. Thank you. And every single member of our headquarters. I got to stop there naming names, obviously. But you are absolutely like family. You come to work every day in search of the best way to support and enable our districts to safely deliver quality projects on time and within budget. And you all do it so well. Thanks for bringing me into your Ohana. I hope I will always be a part of it. I've thanked a lot of people, but I, I must thank my family. And um, bear I think I'll be okay. Mom and Dad, I wish you could be here. I know it's been a rough year, but I know you're watching today. You taught me the value of hard work, humility, caring for others. And that is what I try to continue to do into the 31st year in the Army. I love you both very much. Tyler, Kelsey, and Ryan, I'm extremely proud of all of you. Uh, I thought I had it all together. I may have been a little bit, I wasn't too this morning when I got up, was I, Kim? 
Um, but then Kelsey texted me that she loved me. And then Tyler texted me that he loved me. And um, there's nothing better than that. Nothing. And that started the day off right. Um, Ryan, I want to thank you for giving up a college lacrosse career to move to Hawaii for your last two years of high school. But if you wouldn't have done that, you wouldn't have met would you? All right. Kim, there are simply no words to describe what you mean to me and how much you've supported me. So I'm not even going to try. Thank you. I love you. I'm looking forward to moving with you again. Team. Okay, transition to the new leadership. I'm beyond excited to be handing over command of this division to Brigadier General Cleet and Beth Getz. They're an exceptional team and will serve the Pacific well. The transition was the best of my career. To POD and to this region, you're gonna thrive under his leadership and you're gonna enjoy coming to work every day. To our stakeholders, you are getting a partner to work with that you can trust. I get to move to our headquarters and support this division as Cleet takes you to the next level. Cleet, I know you're gonna take care of the amazing people, but even if you don't, they're going to take care of you, but I know you will. Congratulations, you're beginning the best job you will ever have. Okay, once again, I want to thank General Spellman and General Flynn for the opportunity to serve out here for four years. It was absolutely a dream and the opportunity of a lifetime. I gave it my very best. I love our mission, except EIS is in real estate. I love our people. I love this land and the people of Hawaii, Alaska. Japan and Korea. Kim and I will miss you all dearly, and I mean that. Now that sounds like the end, but I got a story to tell. And I've told this to many of you over, it happened 16 years ago. Uh, and I've told it several times through the years because it meant so much. So I'm moving back to DC, back my first trip to DC when I lived there, 2008 to 2010. And um, I have an Uber then. That, that's how long ago it was. And if they did, I've never heard about it. So they have slugging in D.C. Raise your hand if you know what slugging in D.C. involves. Okay, you, there's lines all over northern Virginia in particular. You stand in these lines, cars pull up, and if three people are in a car, you can get in the, the express lanes and get to work about an hour sooner than you would normally. So at first I thought that was craziness, but I didn't like the bus, so I walked right across the street to a slug line, and I started it. And it was, it was quicker, I enjoyed it. Um, it was quieter and uh, not a lot of stops. So I was standing there one day, I was the only one in line and, and a truck pulled up. And um, he said, you going to the Pentagon? I said, yep, got in. We sat there about five minutes. There's a line on the other side of the street for the bus, about 15 people. And, and he finally said, do you think we can talk somebody to get into the, the truck? Uh, so we can go. I was like, let's give it a shot. So he pulled up. I was in a back seat wearing this uniform. And um, he asked if anybody wanted to ride. Everybody just freaked out, it seemed like. Especially the guy in the fleet, especially the guy in the Navy uniform. He backed up like he was scared to death. I just wanted to, I just wanted to highlight that. <laughs> and uh, an older lady. And uh, the driver, away, he said, you, you seem really, have you never done this before? She goes, I've been standing up 20 years, seen this line, and no, when I looked in the back, I saw the U.S. I almost asked my team to the headquarters to wear their Corps of Engineers shirts with the Corps of Engineers emblem on it. When you wear a shirt in Maui, in on the user pack command and control,
but I didn't say Kim is uh, going to remain on staff at the University of Ch Chaminade University. They like her so much, she's going to work from the East Coast virtually. And I think she's going to have to come back about once a quarter. So I, I, I may take a vacation once a year to come back out here. I love you all. Keep building strong in the Pacific. Thank you. Gibbs, ladies and gentlemen, the incoming 35th Commanding General and Division Commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, Brigadier General Joseph C. Getz II. Well, aloha and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, as I extend the thanks and recognition to all of our honored guests here in attendance. And you be the physical manifestation of support that the division receives from everyone that we work with Without whom we couldn't get to work solving the nation's, nation's toughest problems. And so I really want to thank you all for being here. In my short remarks, I want to lead off by telling you how absolutely ecstatic I am to be here because of POD's role for the Corps of Engineers and the Army at this point in our nation. Any good engineer wants to be where the challenges are. We want to see if we can rise and meet the future. And we want to be here so we can help the public, help the Army, enable a vibrant economy, reduce risk, whatever it is. And this is where I want to be because of the opportunity to do that. Not so I can put my thumbs on any particular projects, but so that we can put our thumbs together and work to solve some of these toughest problems. This is exactly where I want to be. And that chance to make a difference together with trust. And I too would like to recognize the chief and the Sergeant Major Chief, thanks for the nod. Thanks for the opportunity to get you this. It's a great honor, and I, I appreciate your trust, and I'm very excited for the opportunities that lay ahead. General Flynn, sir, I'm excited to work alongside you and the USERPAC team to deliver the facilities and the infrastructure that you need to compete, deter, and if necessary, win out here in the Pacific. And I know you trusted General Gibbs, and my hope is that you'll trust me the, the same way. I, I've watched from afar in previous jobs or what was happening here in the Pacific. And this is a place I want to be and this place I want to contribute. So thanks. A delivery of our, our civil works mission, our MILCON mission, can't happen without great partners either. And so I want to, again, single out Major, Mayor, Sir General Gibbs talks so much about the respect he has for you and the work that you have done together and I think that you are emblematic of the relationships that we want to form across the Pacific uh, to really solve some of these tough problems. I look forward to having a chance to work with you in the future. I've been here only a short time, seven days, but I am already tremendously impressed with the POD team. I want to thank you for welcoming, welcoming me and my family into your Ohana, and thanks for the effort that you put into this trip and culminating here in this fantastic ceremony that you've put together. I'll give you everything I've got, and I'm grateful in advance for everything that you're going to do to support the nation and our national interests here across the region. Kirk, this is the most thorough and well done transition I've ever had. Um, been a part of those where you get in an office and there's a post-it note that says, call me. This was not one of those transitions. Kirk, I, I want to thank you for the time that you put in to help learn what to do doing, how special this division is, um, and your love for this group just shines, just shines through. Um, I'm lucky, and best of luck to you and Kim as you transition to D.C. Move to Oconus uh, is tough. Uh, family got here last night, so they've been up for six or seven hours, but uh, Beth, Ben, Charlie, Addie, you all are pros here at this point. I love you more than you know. I thank you for your support, for allowing me to do what it is I just absolutely love to do. And so, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I want to thank you again for coming here. I want to thank the dedicated Pacific Ocean Division team. I want to thank the, the band, uh, all the folks that helped put this together. I am tremendously excited to have an opportunity to work with every single one of you. God bless you, your our engineers, Army in America, SAONs, be all that you can be.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the engineer song and the army song. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Lieutenant General Spellman, thank you for your attendance at the Change of Command ceremony. We would like to say mahalo again to all who have supported today's historic occasion. This concludes our ceremony. Aloha.